So senior day, and we get ready to get this game underway. And this will be, in fact, uh, what do we got? After this game with the Chicopee Pacers, Lawn Meadow is done for the season. The 24th of February is selection day, and then we'll find out what's going to happen with the playoffs. And Lawn Meadow already in. They've got their 12th win of the season going into tonight's tip-off. redoing my math real quick. Yes, I'm right. 12 wins on the season coming into tonight's game against Chicopee. Unjin shot off the mark, rattled out, and here come the Pacers pushing it up hard. Good defense by Hurwitz. 23 against 23. Her match, Jen Tenzar, for the Pacers. Watching that matchup unfold, Jen Hurwitz, Jen Tenzar, Hurwitz with the ball. Katie Deary gets into the hands of Dana Pugh. Zone coverage defensively for Chicopee, and they get the hand on the pass. Brittany Taylor breaking it up for the Pacers. Nice bounce pass inside. Traveling the call. You know, she should have just turned and gone up strong. Trying to draw the foul. Confidence early against the uh, Lancers. Patriots haven't quite dialed that in. Great opportunity there to draw the foul. You know, sometimes players don't think about that. They want to get off the best shot to make the basket. Picking up fouls is okay. Well, drawing fouls, should I say. Ashley Dion for the Pacers. Substitutions in for Chicopee, number 42, Shannon O'Neill, replacing Katie Sear. Conversation at the scorer's table. Uh, did I hear 25? Was there a foul called early against Emily Martin? No, they were resetting the shot clock. So there was no foul. Ball knocked out of bounds. The 25 from the ref was a reference to the shot clock. Shot from the outside by Deary. No good. And a shot short there. Launched up by Haley Northrup. was called against Brittany Taylor on the floor. Substitution, Katie Sear returning. O'Neill will sit down, deep pass to the point. Hurwitz, deep cross-court pass. Katie Deary coming across the baseline, stops in time to break up that ball for an offensive rebound credit. Although it was eventually controlled by Hugh, Deary would definitely get in there to break that up. Stop the Pacers from getting the ball back off the shot. Erica Ungin. Rattles out. Deary's put back, no good. Rapid pace to start this game. Good hustle both ways. But neither team having a lot of success early. Touch pass all the way down. Into the hands of Katie Deary who steps to the inside. Unjun with the rebound. She's fouled going up. She'll go to the line. Foul called against Nicole Parento, her first. <laughs> Pacers 
Pacers are still scoreless. Touch pass, swinging it quick. Into the middle. And she drains it home. Brittany Taylor. Mm, a little too much gas on that pass. So another team that while I wouldn't say you would expect Long Meadow to come in and dominate, speaking of Katie Deary for three. And a 4-2 lead now to Long Meadow. <laughs> the microphone picking up the referee I'm sorry picking up the coach of the Pacers calling for a timeout and then as his player broke free changing his mind ref didn't hear it so uh, I guess he got away with one substitution for Chicopee Maggie Willette Gets the steal, pushes it up. Three on one, offensive numbers. Unlucky, Hurwitz gets the rebound. After a quick tap by Unjin, Hurwitz would get both hands on the ball. Pop it up, pop it up. Count it. 6 2, Long Meadow. Lancer basketball. against Maggie Willette, her first. And Chicopee will take a timeout while the getting is good. Now I wonder if I have a conflict here against the official score sheet. I believe the scoreboard has it at eight to two Longmeadow. I may have missed something in there, but we'll play catch up as the broadcast goes along. There's a good look inside the Longmeadow huddle. As the girls get ready to go back out and, of course, hope to build on to their lead. And right where we left off with Haley Northrup at the line, shooting free throws. Nicely done on the second. 9-2 Long Meadow. Tipped up. Great defense. The double team getting out of it. And here comes the push. Katie Deary running it up hard. Bouncing it into Unjin. Unjin pivots. Katie Deary hustling now on the other side. So she's got the responsibility of working that baseline and putting some miles on. Deary stops, hops, short of the mark. Last touch by Dana Pugh, but she couldn't control it. It'll go out of bounds. She could be basketball. The full court man-to-man -man pressure still on by Long Meadow. Motion, motion. 
blocking foul. Chickabee ball coming in on the baseline. That'll be called against Erica Unjin, her first. Off her foot. Earlier I had made comment about what I thought was a kickball against Long Meadow. But I see it's pretty easy. Jump ball for you just to kind of shank it off your own toe. Possession arrow gives the ball to Chicopee. Brittany Taylor to inbound. Good pressure by Northrop. To the double defense there and continuing to drive and just kind of popping it up and in. That is Katie Sear. Check that. That may have been Maggie Willett. Couldn't catch if that was a 10 or an 11. That foul, I believe, was just called against number 10, Katie Sear. But the shot happened so fast. Amira Jones into the game for Chicopee. And Simone Jelinez replaces Katie Deary for Longmeadow. Double defense, but as the ball was smacked down, it did fall into the hands of Chickabee, but they couldn't do anything with the second effort. Zoe Ochoa at the point. Hugh, Northrup, Hurwitz. Hugh right there. Left open in the lane. And then we've also got Jelinas, Jelinas, pardon me, Jelinas and Ochoa. Although a substitution now in for Dana Pugh, Jill Sakurka into the game for Longmeadow. Good shot, unlucky, and almost hustled it down. Simone Jelinas. little look left pass right <laughs> on the inbounds and then overthrown turnover to Long Meadow substitution Tegan Northrup in for Haley Northrup sometimes you wonder the advantages of being able to substitute siblings or maybe relatives on some level. It's almost like you're getting the same style of play. I've seen brothers and sister teammates, twin brother and sister teammates. Um, interesting, just interesting. Dynamic. Nice shot there. Number 10, Katie Sear. of one quarter is complete and I believe 13 to 7 Long Meadow is your official score we will check that momentarily Media One Television continuing broadcast of high school athletics across western Massachusetts and it includes this Long Meadow community television drop of the Chickabee Pacers at Long Meadow Lancers you can find this on YouTube but I would suggest your most easy reference would be to go to Media One Television on Facebook and there you can find it, drag and drop the link, share it with your friends, uh, do what you may. Media One Television, I'm Scott Harris, second quarter, about to get it on. Tip 
Yep. Still in control. Ooh, good move there to work your way through the double defense because they were all over Jill Sakurka. But she was unfeathered. Count the basket. 15-7, Long Meadows. Got her box into the corner. It'll stay Chickabee ball. But you won't get a reset on that shot clock. Substitution. Emily Martin on the floor for Longmeadow. Last touch, Chickabee, Longmeadow ball. Tegan Northrup still on the floor. Emily Martin, Zoe Ochoa, Simone Jolinas, Jill Sakurka. Pacers. Intercepted. And the foul will go against Emily Martin, her first. Quick in and turn and pop from downtown. Three-point basket for number 30, Ashley Dion. Last second bounce pass, but touched out of bounds by Chickabee. It will stay with Long Meadow. Jen Hurwitz returning to the game for Long Meadow. And Nicole Parento on the floor now. Returning for Chickabee. Touched up and run down. Good fight for the ball. Good attempt there by number 31, Dawn Martin for Chickabee. He'll go down as a three-point basket. And a nice little runner inside. Count back for Chickapoo. Three-point basket. For Emily Martin. Another successful field goal for Long Meadow. And then a turnover and back again. Can they continue with the momentum? Foul from behind. And that's good. Draw the fouls when you can. Put the pressure on. Tegan Northrup at the line. We are in the second quarter of play. Long Meadow with 11 wins this season. Already a lock for the playoffs. 12 wins, in fact, coming into this game against Chickabee High School. Ball hit the back of the mast, so that's out of bounds. Seven losses on the year for Long Meadow. Last touch, Chickapee. And more 
substitutions. Fast and furious here. Amanda Tyler now on the floor. Although I'll tell you, Lawn Meadow knowing that they are playoff bound, and you've got a decent lead at home, senior night, in a few for two. Uh, this is really where you want to get as many of your players in and acclimated to, uh, to the game. You may need them in the playoffs. That's a foul. I'll wait for them to call it, but I could have told you that was on Katie Sear. Touched on by Chickabee, but controlled by Longmeadow. Touch pass, nicely done by, uh, that was actually Emily Martin, getting control of the ball, going out of bounds, and then just zipping it into the corner. And the hook shot draws the foul as Erica Ungin goes to the line. Amanda Tyler on the floor for Longmeadow. Dana Pugh. And we just called Emily Martin's number 25. Didn't go over and back, although close to committing both. Committing the field goal, Raven Fournier. Hurwitz to Pew in the middle, and then down to Tyler on the baseline, and she gets fouled. Free trip to shoot two. Brianna Lawler into the game for Chicopee. Ah, uh, was that the traveling call? Yeah, you know, you kind of saw she took that extra step. She got some stickum, didn't release that ball in time. Long metal inbound under their own basket. Intercepted once again. Almost a carry, but no problem. She goes coast to coast off the steal. Dawn Martin. Over Martin's outstretched arms, and then into the hands of Erica Ungin, who just stops and pops for two. Bounce pass down low for Martin. She couldn't control it. Ungin, the rebound. Gets it up to Tyler. Cross court pass to Deary. Deary who saves it in bounds. No, evidently unlucky there. Good try, good hustle. Fournier, Raven, Fournier, inbounding. Full court pressure is back on by Long Meadow. Intercepted by Erica Ungin. The outlet pass. Put it right where you had to. For Dana Pugh, 4-2, timeout, Chickabee Pacers. Game well played so far by Longmeadow. And I got to tell you, while it doesn't officially show from the score, Chickabee's doing a good job. I mean, if I had to get ready for playoff basketball and this was the last game of the regular season and I was at home, I love the challenge that Longmeadow is getting. They're having great success. But the Pacers are definitely challenging the Long Meadow Lancers. 
Good defense by Chigabe, and it pays off with a steal. And drawing the foul, Don Martin will go to the line. Katie Deary. He gets hit with it. no foul I don't know what I missed I was checking the stat sheet looked down looked up eleven point lead for Longmeadow Chickabee inbounding go in the distance nice transition with the ball unlucky was Martin with the basket Pressure in the corner. Full court pressure up now by Chigabee. Can they turn it into something? And it's another steal. Down by nine. Down by 11 and looking to close the gap. That won't do it. But the putback, no good. Foul on the play. Calling Katie Sear. I've got her for three personal fouls as she goes over the back. And enough team fouls to send Dana Pugh to the line. She's shooting one and one. Oh, I'll tell you what, I didn't see that. Maybe it was away from the ball. But Longmeadow will get called for the foul under two minutes in the first half. Things spread out. It's amazing that Long Meadow has not picked up on this one yet again. Dawn Martin. Pacers putting on a challenge. Stop, pop, drop. Dawn Martin. Hooks it down, touch passes, Katie Deary from three-point land. After a 13-point, oh, let's check the subs, 12 and 20, Jill Sekirka and Simone Jolinez. Into the game for Chicopee, number 42, Shannon O'Neill. After a 13-point first quarter effort for Longmeadow, 22 points in the second quarter. Hurwitz coming up, pushing her team to add to it. She'll do it and make it happen for another three-point basket. Long Meadow. Twenty-five twenty-one so far in just the second quarter alone for these two teams.
Will they get off a last shot? Yes, off the back of the iron. And with 16 minutes complete at the end of the first half, the Longmeadow Lancers leading Chicopee by a score of 38 to 28.